everyone, Mrs. Basega here, and today we're going to show you how to draw circuit diagrams. Now what do you need to have a circuit? You need a power supply, like a battery, wires in order to give the electrons a path to flow, and some sort of resistor that can use up some of that electrical potential energy stored in the battery and turn it into some other thing. If you don't have a resistor in a circuit, wires are assumed to be resistanceless, and oh, <laughs> bad things happen. We assume that we're going to need a <laughs> some sort of resistor in order to take some of that electrical potential energy and turn it into other forms of energy, like heat and light. So how do we draw a circuit diagram then? Instead of relying on everyone's version of what this circuit looks like, electricians have a standard set of pictures that they use called a circuit diagram or a schematic diagram. So we start off with our power supply. This is a nine volt battery. It's traditional when labeling a battery to label its voltage or potential difference if you happen to know it. The battery symbol has a long terminal representing the positive side and a short terminal representing the negative side. We connect this symbol, meaning battery, up to the symbol that represents a light bulb. The light bulb symbol has a filament to show a complete path for electrons to flow. It's also traditional in a circuit diagram to draw as neatly as possible. So while you could put wires all over the place, I like to draw them as straight lines to make it easier to trace the path of current flow. All right, when you get a circuit diagram, I'll often ask you to draw the direction of charge flow. And notice this from FET. The actual charges themselves flow from the negative end to the positive end. That's because the charges that are flowing are electrons. And the direction of charge flow is the directions that the electrons move. They flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal because they're attracted. Now, what other sources of potential difference or voltage do we have? We have one battery. Why not two batteries? If we have two nine volt batteries, I would draw two symbols representing batteries side by side. Instead of nine volts, I'd write 18 volts. The symbol for multiple batteries would have two long leads and two short leads. So that's representing positive, negative, positive, negative. And I'd put the potential difference of 18 volts total now connected to our light bulb again. Another thing I could ask you to draw is instead of drawing the direction of charge flow from negative to positive, why don't I use this as an example to draw the direction of conventional current from positive to negative? Conventional current flows in the direction of the electric field, which is defined as going from positive to negative. So depending on which one you're asked, you could be asked to draw conventional current from positive to negative in the same direction as the electric field, or the direction of charge flow from negative to positive. All right, what other sources do we have? We had one battery, we had two batteries. Let's talk about another source. What if instead of a battery, we had a capacitor? A capacitor symbol is two parallel plates. It's traditional to label the positive side and negative side. In this case, the positive side of the parallel plates is on the left, so I put a positive symbol next to that. The negative symbol is to the right. I have my light bulb, but it's not currently on because I put a switch Right now, the switch is open. The open symbol looks like a kind of like a door that's open. The electrons don't have a complete path to move from positive to negative. So I would call this an 
open switch and an open circuit. If we wanted to make the light bulb run then, let's draw our capacitor with its positive and negative terminal, our light bulb, and the symbol for a closed switch. Imagine you're closing this little drawbridge here is just two dots with a straight line. So that's a closed switch. This would represent a closed circuit that has a complete path for electrons to flow. Now let's look at the electrons flow here. When I close the switch, the electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive, but when the potential difference runs out, they stop. That's why capacitors aren't generally used in a lot of circuits, um, except for circuit logic, which is completely different. Um, they're not used in a lot of household circuits because all the electricity or much of the electricity dissipates pretty much um, very quickly. Now let's talk about a third type of power. Alternating current is a power supply. This could be a generator or an outlet. The symbol for your alternating current is going to be a circle with a sine wave in it. And an outlet has 120 volts of potential difference. Unlike a capacitor or a battery that always has a positive and negative sign, look what this does to a circuit. Putting in an alternating current means that the electrons switch direction. What's actually going on here is the terminals of your outlet switch positive and negative sign about 60 times per second. In this simulation, they slow it down significantly because 60 times per second, you wouldn't be able to see how fast that goes with your eyes. So sources of alternating current switch from positive to negative polarity. These include things like generators and the outlets in your home. In alternating, we generally don't draw the current because each individual electron is moving back and forth. In a household circuit, you don't notice your light bulbs going on and off in this manner because your light bulbs at 60 times per second change so quickly that your eyes can't register a difference in brightness. Now, what do we have besides light bulbs? Resistors are any item with resistance that slows the current of electrons and changes some of that electrical potential energy to other forms. The symbol for a resistor would be, looks like a mountain. It doesn't matter how many ups and downs you have as long as you have that sawtooth shape there. If you happen to know the resistance, it's traditional to write that in. In this case, this resistance is 10 ohms, so I would write a resistance of 10 ohms. Along with our 9 volt battery. And there's our circuit. A special thing to note is resistor covers all sorts of things. Technically, resistors include light bulbs. Resistors are items that use up some of this electrical energy and turn it to other things. So a light bulb is a special type of resistor that changes electrical power over to heat and light. But a resistor could be a toaster. It could be a refrigerator. It could be your phone charger. Literally any other thing that's not a light bulb that is a resistor gets a symbol that looks like a sawtooth. So before you go try it on your own, let's have us draw one circuit. Let's have us draw a circuit that shows a outlet. So 120 volt outlet connected to a light bulb and a phone charger. Let's have it connected to a closed switch. If you know the resistance, put it in. Even the resistance of the light bulb. In the case of the FET simulation, light bulbs have a known resistance. If you click on them, this is also a resistance of 10 ohms. 
So let's check to see if our diagram is done correctly. It has a path for electrons to flow, it has a power supply, and it has resistors to take some of that electrical potential energy and turn it into other forms. The light bulb turns it to heat and light. Maybe if this resistor is a speaker, maybe it turns that electrical potential energy to sound. The last three symbols you need then are just measurement symbols. So if we pull out this voltmeter here, this is a multimeter set to measure voltage or potential difference. Its symbol, if it's measuring voltage, is a capital V. If it's measuring amperage or current, is a capital A. And its symbol, if it's measuring resistance, is an ohm. A multimeter can be set to any of these things. If it's measuring voltage, we would call it a voltmeter. If it's measuring current, we call it an ammeter. And if it's measuring resistance, we call it an ohmmeter. Not to be uh, confused with the unit for resistivity, which is ohm dash meter. Okay, so let's recap our symbols that we need to know. Of your power sources, you should know a battery versus multiple batteries. In this case, this is two batteries. You can tell because there's two positive terminals and two negative terminals. There's a capacitor that releases its current and potential difference very quickly all at once. And a generator outlet or other source of alternating current. This makes the electrons vibrate back and forth in place as opposed to making one complete path around the circle. We have our two types of resistors. We have the light bulb and the everything else. In general, resistor symbol is going to be the sawtooth for any type of resistor. We have our elements that control the flow of current, like a wire, an open switch, and a closed switch. We're going to save this symbol for when we talk about fuses on Wednesday. The purpose of a fuse is to protect a circuit. And then we have our measuring tools, voltmeter, ammeter, ohmmeter. All right, everyone, best of luck.